Hey, this is Passy from Passy's World of ICT, the guy with the white hat and another Southern Doug Club access database lesson. And today we're going to be making the screen forms uh, so that everyone can have a look at everything on the database together, like in that picture. All right. Now with the video speed, remember I'm a slow talker, so it's best to uh, go to this tools cog, which is on the player bar of the video. And if you click on that, you can go to playback speed, click that arrow and put it on 1.5 or 1.75. Uh, and you'll find the video flows a lot better and it will go quicker for you. The other thing is this is going to be a long lesson. Uh, there's quite a bit to do learning how to make screen forms in Access. And so there will be a timeline index in the video description. It won't be this one, but it'll be similar to this. So we suggest you take breaks. Like if you get to a stage where uh, it's a stop point uh, for you, that's okay. You can stop there. And then when you come back, you can just click on this timeline index uh, to where you're up to and continue the video from there. All right. So that should be really helpful for you for getting through this. Maybe don't do it in one go because it's going to be a really long video. Uh, split it over a couple of sessions to do it. All right, so real world databases always have screen forms. So when you're shopping for things, I mean, you want to see a photo of the thing and see what it looks like. And they'll have forms that are laid out with information. In this case, they've got buttons, uh, all of this on the screen. And that's what we're going to do in Access. We're going to make some screen forms. So instead of looking at those uh, spreadsheety type tables, uh, we'll be able to look at screen forms. Okay, so we're going to make one for the members' dogs, uh, where we've got all the information about a particular dog here, the German Shepherd, and that belongs to Desiree. We've also got the, some, some limited member information here from the members table as well uh, on there. So we know for each dog who the owner of the dog is and how to contact them. And there's a record navigator down the bottom where you can flick through and of course see all of the different dogs which are in the database. And then we'll have one for the members too, a form for that where you can just look at the members. Uh, so this one's for Nikki New. <coughs> And it's got her contact details and also information about fees. She's good. She's paid all of her fees. So in a separate lesson, you notice we've left a space there in that uh, dogs form. We're going to add images onto the forms, but we won't be doing that today. Uh, we'll just be using the form builder and coloring it all up to make these forms. Now, a screen form is called a form. You might be wondering, why isn't it just called a screen? Why do they call it a form? Uh, because it formats a record from the table data and puts it onto the screen for us, okay? So it lines all of these labels up in a row there, at the labels which are on the table for what the things are. And for each particular row in the table, it'll display out the information formatted onto this screen form. Now, a lot of people get confused. They think that they've got data in the screen form and data in the table, uh, but it's actually all the one data. The screen form is just kind of like a window that looks at the data. Okay, it's like taking a little photo of the data and uh, playing around with it to make it look better. Uh, but the data always lives in the table. So it's always here. Here's that row for Nikki New from the table. But it's a lot easier to kind of read it on this form and find things uh, than it is to try and look through the table, especially if we had a big table with a lot of uh, member data records in it. Okay, so screen forms make it easy, but they're just a window that the information isn't stored in here. It's still always stored in the table, but you can change things on here. So if um, Nikki New changes her mobile phone number, we can put the change in here and we can click save up in the top left hand corner and save that and it will save the new phone number value into the database. Okay, so uh, you can do things on the form. You can add new records, you can modify records, uh, and then all of those changes are saved into the actual table. The table is where the data lives and permanently resides. Now, as per the analysis document that we did right at the start of the dog club, you always sit down with the uh, client and work out what they would like and what they need to have and talk about their business. And you might suggest some things they should have, which they hadn't thought about. And we came up with two forms. So we need one for the members uh, where you can members can be defined and we needed all these values, which we've put into the table and we need a dog's data entry form as well. Okay, so there's two forms we're going to build in this lesson. 
and they come straight from the analysis document. So the total work is to build these two forms. Now it's gonna be split across several lessons because we won't put drop down lists in today and we won't put the images, but sort of 80% or 90% of the work on the form is gonna be done in this lesson. So we're gonna build the two screen forms. Like we said in the other ones, we're going to maybe have to revisit some validations. Uh, definitely put form images on and definitely make drop down lists. Okay, if you don't know what a drop down list is, don't worry, you'll find out in the lesson when it happens. So in Microsoft Access, this lesson will do the following. We'll create forms which display database records one at a time, and we'll create screens for the dog club so they can operate more efficiently. So we can display individual member details, individual dogs. You can easily modify values on the form and save the record. Uh, you can flick through the data records and just browse them. And they'll free up Juanita, give her more free time to uh, do dog walking. That's one of the jobs she does because she loves dogs so much. So uh, all about making this easy to do, faster to do, so uh, Juanita can run the dog club and uh, run her life at the same time as well. And uh, these are gonna be used to, we're gonna add a new member and a new dog just to prove that the screen forms work at the end of the lesson. All right, so that's all the things we're gonna do today. So we better get into it. Now to start this training, uh, you can, when we did the last lesson we did was the dog club reports. If you've got your database and you've finished all the lessons and put all the things into that database, like all of the data records, it should be all the validations, all the queries, then you can just use that one, all right? If you've been doing our course right from the start. Otherwise, if you're just doing this as an isolated lesson, that's okay, but get the form start database, or maybe you didn't finish everything in the previous lessons. Make sure you get the form start database, okay, from the download files. Now the download files, it does cost $3 US uh, for a class of 30 students if you're a teacher getting these. Um, I think it's about $2, no, $1.90 Australian or something if you just wanna get it for yourself. It's very cheap. And in the downloads, you'll get the start database, you get a finished database in case you're having problems and you want to look at the finished one to see what it looks like. Uh, plus you get detailed building instructions as well. All right, and you get the analysis document we did originally for the dog club. So you get all of those things uh, in the downloads files. Now, if you're a student, uh, ask your teacher or instructor because they should already have those downloads for you and be able to give you those things. All right, now make sure you're single clicked on the member's dog. So we're gonna make the member's dog's form first and then from everything you learn in this, you should be able to make the member's form, okay? So we're doing the member dog's form first. So you need to make sure you clicked on the member's dog's table. You don't double click to open it up, but just click on it so it's selected. And then you need to go to the create tab and do form. All right, so we're not doing create query wizard or query design this time like we did in the queries lesson. You need to be single clicked on this to select it. Make sure nothing's open here. If you do open it, close it, and just make sure you single click so it's highlighted. Then you go create and then you go to form, all right? This will create the basic form, Access does this for you. So Access will make this, it's gonna get all of the table fields out of the dogs table and format them, that's why it's called a form. Format them onto a screen here, uh, which is very basic, but it does a lot of the work for us, so we're happy about that. And we're gonna make this screen all nice, is what's gonna follow. So like in previous lessons, you can move your mouse to the edges of things and get that double arrow symbol, and then you hold down your mouse button, you can resize things. So if you don't know that from the previous lesson, you have to practice, just go to the edge of something like down here, you should get a double arrow. When you get it, you push down your mouse button and then you can stretch and push in and do all those things. All right, it's for resizing. Now make sure you're in layout view. Now during this lesson, we're gonna be doing 99% of the work in layout view. So remember the easiest way to get into layout view is to just go down the bottom right hand corner of access and there's three icons here. That one's design view, which we don't use much, but we will use in this lesson, just a tiny little bit. Uh, this is the main one we're gonna be using for building, the layout view, the middle one. This is the one we use for browsing records when we got our form finished. We will be using that later on, but make sure if things aren't working, if you click on something, it doesn't get an orange box around it. It might be because you're not in layout view. So make sure you're in layout view. And you can also go, uh, up here if view is showing and click on that little triangle arrow and get into layout view. But either way, you need to make sure you're always in layout view when working on this lesson or things won't work. Now at this stage, this raw form will save it straight away and we're gonna call it members dogs. Okay, so click that little save icon up the very top left hand corner of your screen and save that as members dogs, all right? 
Okay, so first thing we'll do is fix the heading. Uh, it doesn't have a space in it or anything. So if you click in this heading once and then click it in again, a white edit box will open up and then you can put that space in, all right? So we're just gonna do that and uh, that's gonna be done. And then now to get out of edit mode, if you just click anywhere on the screen, like a, this white spot here or here, somewhere just anywhere on the form, uh, it should go out of that edit mode on there, all right? Now we're gonna add some color to the form. So you need to make sure you're on the design tab and you get onto the property sheet. Now we've clicked in this white area here. So we've got an orange box all around that area. So we're doing the background color of the form. So make sure you've clicked in one of these white areas around the edge so that you've got that orange rectangle all the way around like this and then get on the design tab and do property sheet, all right? Now make sure of course that you are in layout view while you're doing it and make sure you've got this exact orange selection here or it's not gonna work. All right, now in the property sheet, uh, what we're gonna do is click on the back color. So on the right hand side of your screen, there'll be a property sheet. You need to be on the format tab of that. And on back color, if you click in this box, the arrow and triple dots will appear and you need to pick the triple dots, the builder selector. Now, when you click triple dots, it'll bring up a color palette and you can pick a background color for the form. So we've just kind of picked this light blue, kind of a blue here. I think we ended up using this one because the light blue one was so bright, but we've just picked a blue for ours. If you want to use a different color, that's fine. But this is the idea of selecting a back color and the background color of the form should change, all right? Now, there's another way of doing it too. Uh, is that's to use the format tab instead of the design tab, all right? So if you didn't like that property sheet idea, there is another way to do it. You just make sure you got that orange bit clicked and you go to the format tab, not the design tab. And the only thing active pretty much will be the paint bucket. And you click the down triangle arrow on that and then you can pick a color. And we pick this blue here and you can see the blue's gone in as the background color of the screen. Now the only problem is that the text color here of all of our fields, because uh, it was a light gray, we kind of can't see them properly uh, on that light blue. So we need to now change this text color as well. So often you'll pick a background color and then your text won't look good, but that's all right. It's easy to change the text color as well. The font color here, or the four color as it's called in Access, and that's what we're gonna do next. Okay, so what we have to do, uh, now for making that blue background, it doesn't matter whether you use property sheet or you use format, but don't use both. Just choose one to use. And as long as you get this blue, that's good. Now you have to hold down the control key, which is down the bottom left-hand corner of your keyboard. Keep your finger on that. And while you've got your finger on that, click each of these, okay? And to make them highlighted in orange, all of these labels. Don't click the white ones the data boxes, just click these labels. So you're just holding down control and going click, 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 click till you've got them all selected like that. And then you can go to format and don't use the paint bucket this time. Use the A for the color of the characters or the, the text. And we're just picking a really light blue. Now you can pick white. White will show up nice and bright, but we found that it's usually better just to be a bit more subtle. And because it's got a blue background, we're picking a light blue. If this was a green background, maybe instead of bright, white that's super bright just click a very light green like up in here okay and that just makes it a little bit more subtle and easier for someone to read when they're using the screen for a long time all right now we can also go in if you okay so that was using the letter a and you can see these have all got a nice light blue color and they're really easy to read now so that's great now you can also do it if you wanted to go to the design tab and use property sheet some people might like using property sheet especially if they've been doing uh, our programming course in vb net programming they're used to property sheet uh so go to the design tab and on the format, you need to go down to four color. Now it's not called font color, it's called the four color because these are kind of in the foreground. These are the things um, highest in the layers stack. If you know about layers, that's a background layer. These are on top of the background. So it's actually called four color, which is very confusing. It'd be much nicer if it's called font color, but it's called four color. And then you can click in that and get the triple dots builder and pick a color, all right? So you can do it that way with the property sheet as well, but it's probably easier to use the format tab and just this, that letter A icon to do it. 
All right, so if we look closely at the form, uh, you'll see that there's these kind of dotted boxes. So this form layout, which Access has built, has made a bunch of containers for things to go in, and that's how they all line up nice and neat. Now, in another lesson when we do images, we'll learn about how to customize this and change these container boxes. But for now, we're just gonna use the Access container boxes. Now, it's put a blank box in there just to make uh, this blank here so I can push this one over to here, all right? So it has to have matching boxes. Now, when you go into um, data, when it's not data sheet for you, it's called form view for these, uh, they go away. So when a, a user is looking at this, they won't see that. Um, so don't worry about them. They're just kind of little boxes, container boxes to make everything line up if you've been wondering what they are, all right? So if you click on those boxes and click the delete key, um, they don't go away, all right? So you might've been worried about this. Oh, what's those horrible yucky dots there? And you clicked on that box and tried to delete it. It doesn't delete away. Access needs to keep that there to keep everything lined up, all right? So don't try and delete them. Later on, they're not visible when we use form view anyway. So that's okay. No need to panic about those uh, little boxes. Now, just about a reminder about those form view modes. This is the one we're working in, layout view. Now we will go to our uh, form view later and those little dotted boxes will go away. Uh, that's for when you're browsing through the data and you wanna change data. And design view, we will use once in this lesson, but uh, that's complicated. And we're trying to do a beginner's course here. So we steer away from that and try and use layout view as much as we can. So you can also, as well as that bottom right-hand corner, I find it easiest just to jump down the bottom right-hand corner and click on one of these, but you can also go view and pick it off here uh, on the screen as well. So there's a couple of ways of getting into the three different views that we've got for forms. All right, so we're gonna add a logo next. Now, if you wanna take a break now, this might be a good time to do it uh, and just get up to date, have your background color, have your uh, font color all sorted, and then we'll get on to adding the logo. <laughs> Alrighty, so to get the logo, uh, that's going to go in here. So it's a company logo and we do have one for the Southern Dog Club that is included as part of the download. So you need to click on this uh, icon here, click it so it's got an orange border around it and then go to design and there's a special icon there just for doing logos. So click on logo, all right? Now, the logo is the PNG file, it's this guy here. That's our logo you get in the downloads file. Now it's PNG because it's got a clear background on it. All right, it's not white background, it's just clear as you'll see shortly. So if you're wondering what the logo is, that's it from the downloads. And we're gonna get it fitting in here nicely as the company logo on the company heading, that sort of business type thing. So what happens when you click on that logo button icon here is that it'll open up a browser. So you just go to where your logo, your downloads and stuff are, click on that and then go okay. And that will open it up. And you'll see your logo goes in here, but look, it's way too big. We're just seeing kind of the top of that D uh, giant sized in here, but we're gonna fix that up in the next step. But we've got the logo image into there, but it's only a very small box. So we need to make that image smaller. Now, how you do that is, you, while you're in design view and you're still clicked on that logo, you've got to open up the property sheet for this one. And on that format tab in the property sheet, go down to size mode here and it's on clip at the moment. Now you need to click that button and get it into stretch as shown down the bottom left hand corner here. So size mode, click in here, click the down arrow and pick stretch instead of clip, okay? And what'll happen then is it resizes and it looks really good. There we've got our little doggy, our dog club logo in there, our members dog. So that's looking really nice and professional and that's how we want forms to look at. Uh, we've got a good color scheme and these aren't too bright on the eyes, but we can clearly see all of our data there. So this form is looking really good and we can give it a big tick. All right, what's up next? We're gonna fix the field names. Oh yeah, there is a little problem here. See how dog name on the database, it doesn't have a space in it and dog image location. Well, actually we don't need that. We're gonna delete that one. And dog join dates all joined together actually. And we need to put spaces in there uh, to make that look nice and make it look a bit more human. So we're going to do that next. So several of them need spaces. We need a space there, rego number, dog name, uh, 
dog image location, year born and dog join date. So you have to click the field label like we did with that heading two times. If you just click it once, that's for formatting its color and stuff. If you actually want to edit the contents like this one here, you can see we've clicked twice. It is a little bit hard to read, but we've put a space in there that for dog name. And this one you'll have to go click then click and then it should go white and you can put spaces in the correct spots. This one you'll have to go click and then click and it should go white like this and you can edit them up. And when you do that, um, see here how we've got dog space name, rego space name, dog space join space date and year space born. So they're all fixed up in a lot more uh, human-like, English-like, and easier to read. This one we're now going to remove. Uh, the image location we don't need. Later on in another lesson, we're going to put an actual image on there and work out where we're storing all of the images. Uh, but for now, we can delete that. So you need to uh, hold down your control key and click on this and click on that. Make sure both of those are clicked. And then all you have to do is press the keyboard delete key. So you just have to hold down your left hand control key and go click, click, and then go up to the top right hand corner of your keyboard and press the delete key and that should go away. And when it does, it'll leave a dotted, empty dotted um, kind of layout, empty box there, okay? So deleting image location doesn't remove it from the database. It's only taking it off this window where we're looking at the actual table on the form. So yeah, some people are worried about, well, what if I delete that? Then I won't have a dog image location in my database anymore. So I won't be able to do pictures later on. No, it just takes it off the form, the window view that we have. It's still there in the table, okay? So the form doesn't have to have every field out of the table. It can, and a lot of times only has uh, some of the fields to display. So anyway, that's why I'm going to taking off and not having on our form. Okay, if we drag the top right hand corner and make our form larger. Okay, now we're on to resizing the form. All right, so you can get on there uh, with your double arrows and resize it, but if we close it, save it, reopen it, uh, the resizing goes away. So here we are, what we did was we uh, got down the bottom of our double arrows and stretched it down a bit, and then we stretched it across a bit just to make a bit more kind of open space around here, which always looks better on a screen, the percentage of open space you have. So that was all looking beautiful. So we hit the save icon up the top left-hand corner. We use this X then to close it down, and then we reopened it. Oh no! says the emoji, because we've lost all that extra space we made. Access has just shrunk it down again to the size that Access likes for it, okay? So we need to do some work to fix it so that we can bend and stretch things as much as we like. And when we save them, they stay like this. Access doesn't get its own evil way and make them all small again and not how we want them, all right? So that's what we're looking at now. So I have to change some settings to uh, do that, okay? Uh, now, we need to go to the top of Access, actually, and click on the file. We're not doing File Save As, we're doing File, and you have to go right down the bottom and click on Options, all right? So click on Options. Now, that'll open up a screen panel here, a window. Now, it'll be on General. You need to make sure you go to this second one and click on Current Database. Now, these should already be set up from a previous lesson we did. But if they're not, make sure they're set properly. So on this second one, current database, click on that. We need an application title, which is Southern Dog Club. That makes Southern Dog Club come up the top of all your access screens. And we don't want tabbed documents here. It needs to be on overlapping windows. So they're the two things that are important. Make sure they're set up exactly like this. Don't change any of the other ones down here. And just click the OK button. All right, now that doesn't do the full fix. We still need to be in layout view. So open up the, close the form, save it, close it after we've done that, reopen it. Then you need to get into layout view, which you can do up here or down the bottom right hand corner. And when we're in layout view, uh, what we're going to do is we need to change some things on the property sheet. So while we're on layout view, we want to change this for the whole form, okay? We're not doing individual fields. So anyway, design property sheet. Your property sheet will open up, but you need to use this actual down arrow up here. And instead of picking one of the things like municipality or regio number that's on the actual form somewhere, we want to do the whole form. So you've got to click form so that form is the thing we're working on. All right, so make sure Usually we just go design property sheet and then we jump in and change property. But on this one, you've got to go design property sheet. You've got to go to this selector and select form and make sure it's on form. 
very important. All right, now there's three properties for the form that we have to change. This auto center, auto resize and fit to screen. That's what Access is using to uh, mess up our form and change it back to the way it wants it. So they've all got to be changed to no so that we've got full control. So this should be on form up the top and they should be on the format tab here, all these properties. Now you need to get down to these ones. Auto center, you've got to make sure that is no. Auto resize, make sure that one's no and make sure fit to screen is no. All right, so we set all of those to no in the property sheet. And then of course, click your top left hand corner, you know, to save uh, what you've just done. So save the form so that those property settings get saved. And now if we do the same thing, open it up again, we do our nice resizing because we want some extra space around the edges here to make it look better. And we save it, close it, reopen it. Hey, it we are in control. We have taken control of the form and you can see now that it has left it the way we wanted it, okay? So everything stays the same size as what we did on there. So that's really good. So we fixed up that little problem. So I still got a few things up uh, to left to go, uh, but let's just check out how our form's looking by going to browse mode, uh, which is the form view one. Okay, and let's look at some database records. And so we'll just, we're most of the way there. So let's just stop, or at least 60%. So let's stop and have a look. So change to form view, okay? So we're gonna go view in this first one, form view. And the first thing you notice is all your little white um, layout boxes go away. So this is what the user will see, uh, the form view. And there's a little navigator bar down here with all these things on it. And that's what we're going to talk about next because it's showing uh, the first dog here is Lenny the Labrador. So it's showing that one. How do we get to see uh, the other dogs which are in the database? Okay, we can only see one of them there. So down the bottom of the left hand corner, there's uh, this thing here. All right, so this one here, that's fully rewind. So it's a bit like video players, actually. You click that one, it goes all the way back to the very start. This one, if you just want to go back one record. This one, if you want to go forward one record. The next one, if you want to go all the way to the end. And this one here is to create a new additional record, this funny sunshine symbol, I call it. And it's very hard to see because it's so small, uh, but we'll be using that later. So just keep that in your head that that's where the sunshine record is to make a new record. But anyway, this is how we navigate the records and try these out and you should be able to flick through uh, your database and see the records, all right? So we might actually just show you that. Okay, so this form might look a little different because uh, this is the totally finished version one. Uh, but anyway, it doesn't matter which version you're on. You see these little navigators. If we click this forward button, it's changing to, uh, that's DMAC, the Kelpie. Then we've got Fritz, the Black Labrador Retriever, that giant dog of Juanitas. Uh, Max, the German Shepherd that belongs to Desiree. Uh, Lenny, the Labrador. Cindy, the Dachshund. And Murphy, he's a new guy. We're going to be adding him in at the end of this lesson. My dog, Murphy the Cocker Spaniel, who's sitting there so good asleep at the moment because I took him for a giant walk before this video. And he's so tired and it was raining and we tried out his little raincoat that he got. It's really cool. It works really well and keeps him really warm. We don't have to dry him off when he gets home, which is really good. Anyway, enough about the dog. Well, it is all about dogs, but it's about making the dogs form. But anyway, yeah, these things here, if we want to rewind all the way to the start, we can go back to the start and get to uh, Coco the Brown Labrador. You can go all the way to the end and get to Bessie the Beagle. And there's Murphy there. All right, so we can flick through. So these are kind of flick, 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 and we can see all the records uh, here on the database. So that's the form view, okay? Down the bottom right-hand corner, form view, uh, what that the user will use to use the record. And you can change it too. Like if Murphy was actually spelt wrong and we wanted it Murphy, i.e. because he was a girl Murphy or something. Uh, you could change that and save it and it'll save it into the table, but we'll talk about that later as more later on as well. Okay, so you would have noticed on that uh, form we were looking at, we should have pointed out, on the right-hand side, we had all this information about the member. So we'd added extra stuff uh, to have information about the member on the form as well as the dog. So we're gonna add this inf additional information uh, so that we can have members information on there as well. All right, so here is our form at the moment and it's not looking as uh, tidy as that one we saw, but that's okay. 
we'll get it all there in the end. So go down the bottom here, get those double arrows when you're moused over it. You need to stretch the bottom right down just to make a bit more room for this form. So that's the first thing to do. And then we're going to make sure we're in layout view. So get out of that form view we were just in for browsing. Make sure you're back in layout view. And we're going to go design and add existing fields, which is a new thing we haven't done before, okay? Now, when you do that, you'll get this field list. And because we're working on the dogs form, it shows us the dogs table fields. And you're thinking, well, where's the member stuff if we want to add in the member name and their phone number and email? Well, that's actually hiding away right down the bottom here. It's got members, okay? And you can see that that's where members is. And I think we show you how to use it on the next slide. All right. But just realize field list comes up with the dogs table ones, but the member ones are there. Often people say, there's no members ones. I can't add any member fields onto the form. You can. The other table's hidden away down here and you'll need to click that plus sign, which I think we do on the next screen. All right. So you need to click that plus sign on the members, which is hiding away right down the bottom there. And what that'll do is all the members uh, table fields will appear of a scroll bar, but don't worry about that for now. Uh, the first one we need to get is last name. So what you do is you double click on last name in that field list on the right hand side, and that's going to put it onto the members form, all right, just by double clicking it. And if you remember in the queries, sometimes when we're doing query design, we could double click on the box to get it there. Uh, so last name goes on to our form. Now it goes here, but we're going to move them all around later. So we got last name Alvarez. So that's all really good. We've got our last name uh, field label and field data box there. And notice now it figures out, access figures out, oh, they're doing some member stuff now. So it moves all the member stuff here up the top. Yay! Which is going to make it a lot easier to find things, okay? And because we're doing members, access figures, that's the focus and it puts it up the top here for us. So it has some AI, some artificial intelligence smarts built into it which is really cool and so we're going to need to add now first name email and phone so we've got last name so all you do is you just double click in that field list um, you know first name double click it email address double click it and this was the last time we just did mobile number double click it and then they'll all go in here last name first name email address and mobile number so we've now got some member information onto our form as well as the dog information now behind the scenes how that worked is uh from the dog information this member id code uh access because remember we set up in the first lesson that relationship where this member ID code here is joined to the one in the members table. So it gets a member ID code and goes, oh, who is this person? What do we want to know about them? And it jumps over into the members table and grabs their last name, first name, email address, and mobile number. So that's how a relational database works. And that's why they're so good to work with. They are really uh, fantastic. So all those things are double clicked and we've put them in there. So that's all really good. And now we need to move things around now. And uh, we want to have all the member information on the right hand side and all of the dog information on the left hand side. So make sure you are in layout view and you've got all these dotted boxes here. And in the dotted boxes, uh, they're containers where we can move things into. Now, last name, we're going to take that field name. So if you click on it and hold down your left mouse button, you can move it over to here. OK, and then you can click on Alvarez, the data box. Same thing, get it highlighted in orange and that's going to move move over into here. All right, so we're going to take that field, click on it, so it's got orange around it, and we're going to hold down our left mouse button and move it into this empty box over here. And what will happen is uh, the last name, there's an empty box there now because it's gone into this empty box instead. All right, so that's really good. Now all you have to do is click on this one, so it's highlighted in orange, and you just push down your left mouse. You don't have to go underneath and over. Uh, you can just go straight across and put that one in there. So we can shuffle things around between these empty container boxes on the screen form. And the plan is we want to move all of the members' data on the right-hand side, all of the dogs' data on the left-hand side. So let's split them up. Up here guys dogs to the left and members to the right please take your places all right so when we finish doing that we've got all of the dog information here all the member information here the only thing is this is a bit of a fat field for some reason this box i think was the original image location container so it's a little bit bigger but remember uh all you can do is um yes hang on 
we have to resize that. But also, uh, these don't have the spaces because they've come off the database with the table names for the fields. So remember, you double click in each of these and put a space just like we did for the other dog fields over here. So yep, tidy that up and get that fixed up. And for this one, you can just mouse over the bottom here, get that double arrow, push down your left mouse button and of course squeeze that back a bit so it's the same kind of size as all of these others. And I think that's all we have to do actually. Uh, now we can go back to form view and have a look at the record. So we did all that moving around. So we fixed up that join date so it's skinny and the same size as the others. So now we can go to form view. So in the bottom right hand corner, click this leftmost one, form view. Uh, make sure you've saved the form uh, as well. So you can do a left, top left hand corner save anytime in a bottom right hand corner into form view. And then we're going to use this navigator here. And if you click on these and go forwards and backwards. You can see we found uh, Max, a German Shepherd. We're looking at him at the moment. And it's worked out, oh, there's Desiree Laporta. That's who the dog belongs to. And here's her contact details if we need to contact her about her dog. All right, now that all happened through the magic of relationships, this member ID code. So it was able to find out that we know that Max the German Shepherd from a previous lesson belongs to Desiree and notice how Access has found the right person for the right dog. And if you click to other dogs, this information will change to always get the correct owner because it's linking up this member ID code, it takes that member ID code, it jumps on over to the members table and grabs this stuff out of the members table for that ID code. So it always gets the uh, member. Now I'm really excited about that because that's relational databases and that makes our life so much easier uh, than the old way of doing it before we had that. So uh, but believe me, it's really cool how we can just link up our member ID and for each dog, we can have the member info on the form as well. That is a really good thing. Finished at last. I think that is the form finished. I think it is. All right, so that's the members dogs. Now, notice we got this space down here. In the add images form lesson, we're gonna add images onto the form. So in there, we'll actually put that picture of Desiree and a German Shepherd. We'll have it show up on the form in a little box here. All right, and rearrange a few other things, but that's 95, 90% done anyway. So that's that. Now the members form, we're gonna be leaving you to do that, but we will give you uh, a little bit of help to get it started. So remember the first step is to click on members. So if you need to take a break, now would be a good time. Get your dog's form all finished. You can even come back to this another day because we've been going 37 minutes. So I've got a feeling this lesson's going to go get pretty close to 60 minutes. Uh, that's why we wanted to watch it at fast speed. So it's not so long. But anyway, maybe this is a good time to take a break. Then come back and even do the members form tomorrow or another day. Okay. All right. Welcome back. So members, remember, single click that to highlight. We're going create and then we're going to form. And that will generate uh, the basic screen form, which is shown on the following page here. But something weird has happened. Uh, it also includes a dogs table subform. Notice we've got all our usual stuff here from the members table, all nicely done by Access and lined up for us. But we've also kind of got this little spreadsheet table here of all the dog stuff. Now Access figured because of that relationship uh, we've got, the relational, uh, the member ID code that's in both tables, it figured, oh well, if they want the members, they probably want the dogs as well because they've set up that database relationship using member ID code. Uh, but actually we don't want the dogs on the form. Uh, the main reason is this is too wide and even if we stretch and uh, shrink these it's not going to fit very well and uh, for this particular exercise uh, we're just doing a simple beginners course so we don't want to get into sub forms or anything like that. So we're going to take this off the form uh, which isn't as easy as it looks because you think okay I just need to click on that and highlight it and press delete key on my keyboard and uh, but it doesn't work when you do that all right. A um, bit like how, you know, there were those layout boxes and we couldn't delete them off the form because the form needed them. Uh, the form's a bit stubborn and we can't take this off in layout view. We're actually going to have to change to design view and use design view for our very first time in this course, actually. So you've got to go down the bottom right hand corner and get onto design view to be able to do this. And we need to be very careful while we are in design view. All right, now design view. Whoa, what happened there? We've got all graphs and grids. Uh, this is for very exact designing on a grid layout, okay, which we're not doing. We're just using layout views so we can use uh, those little dotted boxes, okay? But this one 
you can use for much more involved work, which we do uh, use, I think, in our other course on access, the bargain barn one. But anyway, let's get on with it. Down here, the trick is, and you have to be very careful because there's only one way to do this. If you move down to the side of that where table members docked, a little black arrow will appear that'll be smaller than this, but a black arrow. So you need to make sure you're moving the mouse down here that black arrow appears, then you click on the black arrow and then this orange uh, selection happens, all right? So you need to make sure just this is selected and you don't delete any other stuff from your form. But the trick to doing it is, uh, which was not easy to find, I had to Google it to f find this actually, uh, that you have to wait till you get that black arrow, then when that black arrow appears, you can click and then you'll have that uh, highlighted and then once it's highlighted it's easy just press the delete key on the keyboard and bang it's gone it's away uh, then straight away change back to layout view because we well, you don't really want to work in this complicated design view we did have to go into layout view go down here get the black arrow and click so that's uh, selective of a thin orange line is shown there press your delete key on your keyboard to get rid of it then jump straight back to layout view when you finish that and there it is, it's gone. So that's all good. And now you can work on sort of changing this background color, resizing it. Remember, uh, you've got to change those properties. Uh, fit to screen, no. Auto resize, no. And the third one, which for some reason I just can't remember right now, those three uh, properties. If they're up on the screen, I remember them because they're all together in a group. Uh, yeah, and sort of uh, change colors around and things like that. Now, this is a member's form uh, which we made on the following page. Now, just brace yourselves for this. Whoa, what is it all pink? Okay, uh, we need to want it sort of a sort of a lipstick pinks uh, color palette for this, kind of all nice and girly girly, uh, which is okay. The customer is always right and you deliver what the customer wants, not what you want to do. And uh, life will go really well for you and uh, they'll like the product and tell their friends about it. Do it your way, the way they didn't want it. Uh, business isn't going to go so good. And I can tell you that from experience. So that's what you wanted. So that's what we've got there. You don't have to do these colors. We won't force you to do a lipstick pink palette unless that's what you want to do. But yeah, that's how a finished member's form should look. It's okay to have this uh, empty space here. That's all right. Because uh, this is member ID code. And then underneath sort of comes all the information. So that's all good. So that's what we're aiming for you to do. Uh, and everything we've done there, you would have learned how to do by doing the dog's form. So you should be able to finish off that member's form and get it working. But we're not quite finished yet. Uh, we're going to actually test these forms out by entering some data into them. Because that's the whole idea. The idea of a form is it's supposed to be a lot easier to type into than one of those big spreadsheety tables when you're in uh, looking at the database tables. So how you get a new record is, remember I told you to remember that sunshine symbol? Because it's very hard to see. It's microscopic down there in the navigator bar. So we need to be in our form view. So that's the most important thing. Make sure you're in form view first. Then you need to click that little sunshine symbol. That's what it looks like if you can see it. Click there and that makes a new blank record where we can enter data into. Or the other way is if you click this button and go right to the end and then click one more, it'll go one extra one and make a new record for you. So that's another way of doing it. Either way, you need to get right to the end and this is gonna be record number five, a new record, okay? And we've got a blank record there where we can fill out things. So the member we're gonna do is Nikki New, who's the mum of little Murphy, who's still being a really good boy asleep. Uh, Nikki News at work, even though this is during the COVID-19 lockdown, uh, she works in an essential service, so she's at work and I'm looking after Murphy boy. Uh, but anyway, that's the details there. Uh, don't try to come around and visit me or phone me up. That isn't real data. That's just made up stuff. Now, new has a very short name. Remember, we're using the first five letters of the name, last name, as part of our member ID code. Now, when you don't have five letters, what you do is you do repeat. So we go N double O, then we just start repeating her name again. N double O. We don't get to double O because you only need five letters. So her code will actually turn out new, no, then double O one. So if someone had a really short uh, last name like L Y, L Y. I've had friends from Malaysia that had a last name of Lie. Um, that's okay, you just do like L-Y-L-Y-L, -Y -L -Y -L, 
okay, to fill it up. So just do repeats if someone has a name, last name less than five letters long. Henry Ford, F-O-R-D, just go F-O-R-D, then start repeating, do an F, all right? Hopefully you got the idea of that. Uh, so she's gonna be Nuno001. Uh, we've typed all these details here onto the form. Now what you'll notice is if you mess up the email here, like if you get to put the .com on, hey, our old validation message we made in the validation lesson comes up. So this is really cool. Everything uh, that we did in that validations on the table, because the form's a window onto the table, those validations automatically flow onto the form. So if you don't put the 001 on the end here, uh, it's gonna give you an error message. And it also uh, gave us a mask for typing that, so we couldn't type letters in here as well. So all those things we set up, if you try and put a membership fee of zero there and press enter, we'll get the membership fee error. So all that stuff that we did all that hard work, that was a really long lesson doing validations, and this one's being a really long one too, so we're not talk too much. But remember all that hard work we did, but it automatically flows onto the form. So that, again, to me, I get excited. That's a really cool thing, because uh, when we built databases in the old days, we never had anything like this, and it was such a mammoth job to do. Um, now, Nicky News Dog, Murphy. Uh, that's Murphy, Cocker Spaniel. Uh, that's his breed, and he is a male. That's correct. He was born more recently than 2016. Uh, but anyway... We type all of that in. Now on the dogs form, uh, it also has this member information. Now you don't have to type that in. This is a really cool thing about relational databases and why I love them so much, is if you just type the new no 001, that we entered on the members form, we save that record, make sure you save that record. What Access will do is if you just type the member ID code that you've just done in that members uh, form and press enter, these things magically appear. Access goes off to the table and grabs them for you, all right? Uh, so that's really good. And uh, you shouldn't be changing them here. Now we should make those protected fields. There is a property we can do so people can't change them there. But look, that's for the advanced lesson. We do that in the bargain barn. But remember, this is a beginner's course, so we're not doing it here. Uh, and make sure you save the form so that this data gets saved. Otherwise you come into the form again. And little Murphy, he's not there, he's, he's disappeared. And that won't be good. All right, so you've got to save that data after you've entered it or done modifications to it. Uh, now, behind the scenes, what happens is these records are actually written into the tables. So we did that all on the form because it was a lot easier to type it in and click the save button doing the form, but it has gone into the table and that's where it's permanently stored. As long as you remember to click that top left-hand corner save button, very important. After you've typed um, someone's record into the form for a new member, make sure you hit the save button or it will not appear in the table and you'll have to do it all again, which isn't fun. And Murphy the Cock Spaniel has appeared in the dogs table, all right? So that data has been saved permanently. So that's really good. That's all working. Now, it's only one problem. These were all capital name last names when we were setting up the tables, but new, we managed to type it in in little letters here, uh, which isn't good. We want that in capital letters. Now, we can fix that up pretty easily on the form. That's our last little job, I promise. And then we'll be finished. So we need to go back into layout view on that member's form click on the new box, the last name where it's got new, uh, click on the last name box and then, so it's highlighted in orange, then right click and you have to go right down the very bottom and click properties. And the property we're gonna change, it's a bit hard to see here because they're microscopic. So we'll enlarge it, uh, is that first one. You need to be on the format tab and the format, you put a greater than sign. Now, if you remember back to the validation lesson, a greater than sign means uppercase in Access. Access sees that and it knows it's got to do uppercase. All right, so all you need is just a greater than sign. Don't go putting greater than AAA or LLL because that's what we did in uh, back in the validation lesson. This is format and you just put a greater than sign there. That's all you need to do. And then of course, make sure you press enter and save it. And what will happen now is even though new was typed in with lowercase letters on the form, it's going to display an uppercase. All right. So that's fixed that problem there. And we've used a new thing called formats, a whole nother area of access. Uh, we did validation, we did masks, but we didn't actually do formats. That's another area. But again, this is a beginner's course, so we're not going to go into formats for detail. But just be aware that there are formats and also there's field protection so that people can't type into fields and change values. Uh, all of that's in the more advanced course we've got if you want to get into that. 
So finally, the forms are complete and all we need to do is save the database and our time here is done and we're gonna be around the 50 minute mark. So I'm happy with that because I thought it was gonna be a long lesson. So this should be familiar if you've done our previous lessons. If you haven't, you need to go up the top of access where it says file and click on file, which will open up this panel. Uh, we're not going down the very bottom to options. This time we're going to save as. Make sure you're on database file types ACCDB and click the save as button and navigate to where your project is with the Windows Navigator, the normal kind of thing when you save a Word doc, PowerPoint or anything. So ours is in L5 screen forms, that's the name of the folder. So we're just gonna call it SD forms finished because it's finished now. Uh, make sure you leave that .accdb on the end there and it's Microsoft Access Database. Then click the save button. Now if Access says, do you wanna replace it because you've been saving as you're going or something, just say yes, you do wanna replace it and that will all be good. So our tables now, we added in uh, Nikki New. Notice how she's still lowercase in the table there. You can fix that to uppercase if you want, but we've got that magic of format on the form which fixes it anyway. And we've got Murphy as a new dog there. So this is what you should have in your tables. There's still some members uh, to go in, but we're going to use those for testing when we do drop down lists and when we put images on the forms. So we need some more test data still, so we're not adding all the members and dogs into the forms just yet. So we're making really good progress with our course. This is the whole beginner's course laid out here. And where are we going to next? Well, let's see where we've been. First, we created the database tables. We got them all set up. You always have to do this as your first step. Then we made those validation rules and we found they're really cool because they'll just automatically flow through to the forms and we've got validation on our forms as well. Then we did queries to extract our information and make little online spreadsheet looking type reports and then we made much fancier reports so we kind of jumped down to this lesson here and created reports which looked really good and now today we have done screen forms and we also i think input masks and validations taken care of for the forms as well we saw it automatically flowing through and tested it out a bit although we didn't do screen prints of that so that's all good uh so the next thing we we have done quite a lot we haven't got we're more than half Halfway, it must be 60%, 70% of the way through the database build, I think. So next we're gonna look at making drop-down lists on our forms. So there's still some work to do on forms. The ones we've done today have got most of the work done, but we still need to do drop-down lists and we're still gonna add images on, which will be the next lesson after that. But drop-down lists is the next one, okay? So you need to do these in order. And if you're wondering where they are and how to figure out which ones you should have been doing, uh, if your teacher hasn't told you or it isn't on your learning management system what to do. All right, just go to the PASI's World of ICT website, click on that MS Access SDC, which is this beginner course, SDC, of course, for Southern Dog Club. And you will see the lessons in order. So first we created the tables, then we did the validation lesson, then we did the queries lesson, then we did the reports lesson. Uh, now the downloads for that will be there soon. We've still got to work on that. And this forms lesson, well, we haven't built the website page yet, but uh, that'll be the next one slotting in here. And so you need to do these in order will work best because uh, and some of them you, you just have to do it in order because if you don't have tables well there's no way you can make a form <laughs> to look at the table if you don't have tables and if you haven't got the validation rules in first on the tables they're not going to work uh, when you make the forms like we just saw today so you got to do these in order and then we got a few more to finish off and that will be the beginners course done Okay, so that's all of the core stuff. So thanks for watching. Uh, give this video a big thumbs up like because I'm sure it helped you out a lot uh, with learning how to do really professional, great looking forms in Microsoft Access and make sure you subscribe to our channel so that you see the next lesson which is going to be on those drop down lists for the forms and the next one after that which is going to be adding the images on the form so subscribe 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 and we'll see you in the next lesson